Rub up your engines! BMW X5 here. People say horrible things about them. People say great things about them. Here's a real one that a guy bought used. Okay, the original MSRP was $78,000. He paid 28 grand with 40 something thousand miles on it. Now, this guy had worked on the assembly line at BMW, and now he does stuff like testing them out. He could take these things apart and put them back together again. That's one of the reasons he bought the car, and the other reason was he lives in South Carolina, where strangely enough, he found a British mechanic who works on these things, who's honest. Now, this may be the only BMW mechanic in the world who's honest, as far as I'm concerned. Now, you can see why people buy them, because they're beautiful SUVs. They're luxurious inside. <laughs> we'll go on the other side while we're walking around. The leather interior's immaculate. It's got the dual sunroof, lots of room in the back. As a warning, if you don't know any BMW mechanics and you buy one of these, you better have a big piggy bank for repairs. In the case of this one, he has had to replace the air conditioning compressor between 40 and 80,000 miles. It was $3,100. He had to replace the compressor, the condenser. The compressor just flat blew a hole in itself. Even at that price, if he'd taken it to the dealer, it would have been even more. <laughs> so, you realize they're not cheap to fix. But, as you can see, here's the injection system. It is solidly built, an inline six. He took the plastic crap engine cover off and threw it away, because he knows about machines, it doesn't serve any purpose. And truthfully, hey, he lives in South Carolina. You do not want heat to build up on your engine. You want it to dissipate. Now, if you live in Alaska, I can understand it. It's freezing cold, you want the heat to stay under there, but where it's hot, a beauty cover actually serves negative benefits. It's hurting the vehicle by holding the heat in. I mean, look, all this stuff's plastic. This little plastic line broke, and this little plastic hose here was 75 bucks. Let me tell you, <laughs> that's the tip of the iceberg on one of these. As you can see here, this is the charge hose, right? And this charge hose, he tried an aftermarket one, but it blew off. So he had to go back to OEM, and this hose was a $410 part. Like I say, tip of the iceberg on these things, the parts cost a small fortune. That's one of the reasons that he could get a $78,000 car for $20,000. I don't care what kind of nonsense they give you about Oh, high resale values. I remember way back decades ago, BMW touted that they had the highest resale value in the world. They claimed that like their 528 version had the highest resale. They found some item that they barely sold many of, and then the next year the prices went up, so the resale value of the other ones they claim was high. This is more reality, BMW. 70 something grand for a new one, 40,000 goes for 20 something grand. That is the reality of things because most people understand that BMW stands for bring my wallet when it comes time to maintain and fix the car. And check out the tires. He's got nice tires. You know why he's got nice tires? Because this baby came with those stupid run flat tires and he said it rode like crap. Why would I want a car like this that rides like crap? That's the big reason you really don't see too many cars anymore using run flat tires. Yeah, I mean, if you're worried that, you know, bad people are coming after you with guns, <laughs> You want to have bulletproof tires that run flat? Yeah, but if you want a nice car that rides nice, run flat tires stink. So, he went to normal good tires. You can see these aren't crazy low profile. They're normal tires, normal rims. They're not that crazy going to go flat every time you hit a curb or hit a pothole and blow out. They're much better with these tires on them. Now, this car has about every option there is. But he went with the base wheels. He didn't want to pop his tires on the potholes and deal with that crap. But everybody wants these big wheels with low profile because the way they look. This guy's smart. He got this for the way that it drives. The original idea of BMW was the ultimate driving machine. And way back in the 60s, hey, they were driving circles around American cars and they kept their driving up. It's just that they started going too much into stylistic crap that doesn't serve a purpose. We'll take a look inside. Start her up. 
Whoa, look at that BMW, boy. That's a really cool little... Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Now you can hear, this is one strong running engine. I'm gonna put my scan tool on it, but BMW and these six cylinder engines, they can run forever. Smooth power delivery, nice smooth idle. A lot of companies have gone away from straight sixes, not BMW. These things are solid built. And this one has an excellent transmission. He says it shifts even better now than it did when he bought it years ago. They're solid built cars. It's the plastic and electronic stuff that'll drive you nuts. And as he just told me, you gotta maintain them. A lot of people don't maintain anything. Okay, let's say you're gonna buy a Toyota, right? Buy a Toyota, change the oil every five, 10,000 miles. That's about it. First 100,000 miles, 10 years, that's probably all you're gonna have to do. These you have to maintain. If you don't maintain your car, don't buy a BMW. Ah, oh, we turn the old scanner around. Diagnosis, X5, US. Diagnosis and an auto scan. Here we go. So here we go. Now we always expect a few codes. We'll start out with the integrated chassis management. It has one fault. And the code is signal invalid from a transmitter. <laughs> from the electric power steering. As the owner just said, if you heard him, stupid German stuff. Yes, the Germans get carried away with just about everything. We really don't care about that. There's also an electronic power steering code. Let's look at that. I bet it's the same code too, watch. Electronic power steering torque sensor steering angle index faulty, intermittent. So we'll erase that too. The headlight high system is <laughs> two codes. Let's see what those codes are. It's actually getting to be comical now. Okay, intermittent connection headlight to CID no communication CID image data invalid or faulty. So we'll erase those two. So according to this the adaptive headlights aren't adapting quite correctly But <laughs> he has no problem seeing when he's driving nobody's flashing their brights at him So we'll see what else is on the computer. We have the integrated automatic heating and AC Okay, that's got a fault too. Let's see what that fault is. All right, people You're not gonna believe this but this one is stratification flap motor, front right, locking has been detected. You're gonna find this on any BMW as it ages. You're gonna get wacky codes up the wazoo because of all the technology. You wouldn't believe how many separate modules are on this thing. And all it takes is one little glitch. Realize all these computer modules work on five volt reference signals. Not much power, and usually the amperage that goes through them is milliamps, thousands of an amp. Hardly any little glitch, and it'll do squirrely stuff like this. So we'll go back, we'll erase that too. Now all the codes are gone, except for this first one, the integrated chassis management. It erases, but it immediately comes back on. It'll be the same code for sure. Signal EPS is invalid, the transmitter for the electronic power steering. So according to this, it's not getting the actual position of the power steering. There's something wrong either in the wiring or the sensor itself. But like I say, he hasn't had any problem driving it around. So let's look at live data. Two live data, battery voltage is fine. Remember, these are color coded. If anything's weird, it's gonna be color coded and be off. But look at all this stuff, ambient pressure, ambient temperature, throttle valve opening position, charging pressure. Oh, look at the German plus here. The data's here on this machine. Do I have to get a pressure gauge and hook it up? Fuel, maybe it'll leak, start a fire. Then you gotta buy new gaskets. This, at least you get a good machine like this, you can actually read it to see if it's working right or not. I'll give them an A plus for that one. <laughs> And check this out. Variable camshaft timing exhaust position with engine running. It's running. It is 4.06 per 0.22. It moves around a little. Kerbal winkles means crank angle. The angle of the crank. Yes, they have to have everything in strange languages, even on the machines that we Americans use. So here we go with more of the pressure. I mean, look at this. Running rough value. Pretty close to zero, I mean. Look, we're talking about you're off of 23 one hundredths of a percent, it's practically nothing. Of course, there's no misfires, they're all zero. But the Germans go further than misfires, they go to rough running values. Now that one was perfect for a second, it was 0 .000. Oh, now it's 0 .049, 0 .060, 0 .000 again. That's the Germans for you. In their search for perfection, they find out well, we can get close, but we can't get the whole way. Good, but you can see, look at the amount of data. This thing has so many modules on it, it will make your head spin. Alternator temperature, alternator excitation current. You 
you can really analyze these things if you want to go that far. It shows you the hall sensor, one accelerator pedal voltage, sensor two pedal voltage. They really make it so you can analyze the stuff. There's no arguing that. In ignition timing on a running engine, it's running. It is three degrees Kerbal Winkle, 3.75, 4.5. We'll rev it up, of course. It'll go up then because it's got advanced timing. Well, it's actually in excellent shape. Kerbal Winkles are not, so let's take it for a spin. And of course, it's got a killer stereo. We got all kinds of look wide angle, side angle, regular angle. Look, we can see That'll everything. Do. Look. Here we go, we're moving, you can see we're moving. I love these cameras. Now this baby even has night vision on the front. Let's hope it doesn't have an MG42 under the hood too. <laughs> and of course, as you can see here, it's got a nice heads up display. Shows you how fast you're going and the speed limit where you are, it's 25 miles an hour here. Comes in real handy. And this is broad daylight. We're looking at this thing driving into the sun. This really works well. And now you can really see why people buy these things because they're fun to drive. They're very smooth. It's kind of like riding on a magic carpet ride, but hey, they handle like a dream. It's just the repairs that are nightmares. <laughs> so here we go to our little drag strip. Nobody's coming, so well, somebody's coming there. You take these things out in the country, out in the highway, that's what they're made for. And here we come to our little drag strip. Now realize, this is just a six cylinder inline engine, but the Germans know how to make them. We'll check the shifting and we'll check the engine. Ready, set, go. Smooth power delivery. Those shifts, you can barely feel it shifting. That's how they sell them. You get in one of these and drive it, you're gonna think, oh man, I'm in love with the BMW. <laughs> but it may be one of those love affairs that doesn't last over time. And after you divorce your fifth wife, you might wonder, gee, maybe I should stay away from those things. This has got 81,000 miles on it now, but hey, you really don't have anything wrong with it at all other than all that crazy German nonsense angle, this, that, and everything else. It steers fine. It drives fine. Look at that passing gear. You can pass people in this, and the engine just keeps ticking. They're pretty quiet inside. We'll come to a stop. The other thing I hear is the fan. It's on low. That's all I can hear is the fan on low. Smooth as can be. These six cylinder engines, that's what they're made for. Smooth power. Now gas mileage not so much. He gets around 20 miles a gallon, but this is an all-wheel drive vehicle too. It's heavy and it's fast. So, you know, you can't whine about 20 miles a gallon if you're going to drive something like this and have some fun in it. It's not made for gas mileage. That's one of the reasons that straight six engines really aren't that much around because they do use a bit more fuel than a V6 configuration will. And one of the reasons he went for the six cylinder was because he didn't want the V8 because he knows about BMWs. He works for him. <laughs> and he knows the valve stems on the V8s go bad. You gotta pull the engines. It costs a lot of money. My grandson's got a V8, BMW, and yes, the valve seals are gone and it burns oil. They all do that. It's a known flaw. On these six cylinder engines, no, they're strong engines. And listen to that sound. Yeah, it's a six cylinder engine, but boy, it's got a nice hum to it. BMW X5 known as one of the most expensive vehicles in the world to take care of and maintain, but this guy maintains it. And he has a English mechanic who knows how to work on them. You can see the technology from my fancy computer that's in these things. It's absolutely insane, but they are fun to drive. The engines are solid. The transmissions are solid. Just realize you got to maintain them and you're going to have to find yourself a mechanic like he did. The English guy who understands, guy like me with equipment that can actually see what's going on, understand how to fix these things because they are so complex. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.